Welcome, adventurers. Today we're going to turn that stuff into this stuff. This is a packaging for one of those snack lunch things, uh, Bistro Bites from Hillshire, it says. Uh, I don't want all of it, but I will use all of it at some point. I'm going to trim out these deeper sections, trim them down to make little boxes, kind of like soap dishes. Fill them in with a little styrofoam, glue them together with some construction adhesive. And bada bing, a little like sci-fi looking box. Now we need to cover our trim areas, our gaps. We're going to use EVA foam. I cut it off to about a centimeter, as I recall. I take that strip, cut it out, then hot glue it around the edge. Just like that. I like to trim things to length because I'm not perfect, and therefore it makes a much better fit. We're going to repeat that very same process to make some bands around the two longer flat sides, just like this. And then cut out a piece of cardboard to cover up the seams a little bit. And I just make a random geometric shape here, as you see. Very symmetrical. Hot glue again. And bada bing. Now we want to make some pallets. A little guy here figured out that two inch by two inch would make it an appropriately looking size pallet. So I cut that out, cut out some cardboard that's two inch by two inch, super glue them together. And then we have the base. And I cut up some square dowel, super glue that to the bottom. And now we have three pallets. Pretty simple, right? They even stack like real pallets. Unevenly. Let's pick some thing make some things to put on the pallets like little barrel looking things out of lids. Hot glue some of those together. Look like little miniature barrels. Take an old pill bottle. Cut the threaded part off. This one had some indentions in the side, so it kinda looked like a barrel already. I wanted it to kinda represent one of those biohazard waste barrels, so I glued this weird looking gear button on it. Kind of figured out my layout, hot glue it into place, and first pallet's done. Second pallet's going to have something interesting on it. Cardboard tube wrapped in brown paper tape to look like sort of a cylinder barrel thing. It'll be laying on its side and strapped down. Hot glue the caps from these two medicine bottles onto the end of it. As you see here, the seam side of the tape I put down to hide it, hot glue, and onto the pallet it goes. Using white construction paper, I cut out some, I think they're about 5 mil, half a centimeter wide strips that I go into place and then wrap around and cut to length after they're glued in place. Just like that. Now keep in mind this is the bottom. It doesn't have to look perfect. People will likely never see it on the tabletop. Now the third palette, we're going to make it look like stacked boxes on it. But we're not carving a bunch of boxes. We're going to cut out some squares. Just like this bunch of little squares and rectangles. Figure out an orientation to place them on there. And again, I'm just using scrap styrofoam here. I don't even care if it's really square. I'm going to figure out my layout, trim a little bit, make them intentionally uneven, hot glue them into place. I want the gaps so that way when I do this next step, it becomes obvious. Now we're going to make a tarp. And I'm using my shop towels here, watered down PVA glue to soak the rag or the uh, shop towel in. And you want it to be pretty saturated. Soak it in nice and thick. 
lay it over the top without knocking it over. Get a good drape and use a wet brush and kind of sculpt it into place and then with tweezers or your fingers pull off the edges so you give it a tattered look. While that dries we're going to make yet another weird thing using some fruit cups and little gear buttons and the inserts from an adult beverage bottles because I'm an adult and I drink adult beverages. Remember to sand your plastics. Uh, they take glue and paint much better that way. Hot glue and super glue alike. And just like this, we have an interesting shape. Now I need a base kind of to hold this thing up, and I figured out that this bottle cap is about the same diameter as the part of the shape that I want to sit on. So I trace it out, cut some blocks, trim out the circular part that I traced around, do a little sanding to smooth it out, make it look nice. Wear a mask when you do that. Figure out my orientation, hot glue, and now there's a sort of styrofoam cradle for this odd shaped thing. I want to cover up the dole emblems on the top there. So using some scraps from my last build, I'm actually going to super glue these little EVA triangles on top of that. And they do a stellar job of hiding that manufacturer's uh, mark on there. And of course, EVA takes super glue amazingly well. And with the sanded plastic, it bonds exceptional, exceptionally. This is a thick cardboard tube that I'm going to turn into kind of a fuel tank. I decided about six inches is the length that I wanted because it looked good on tabletop scale. Made for a very large fuel tank. So mark, cut, and of course I use a saw straight from the garage. Cover this in brown packing tape. Now you could have done this two ways. One the way I'm doing it, which is to wrap it around the circumference. Of course you could have stretched out in lengths along it, which may have looked better, especially when I later cover the sides with some rails. There I made a black line so I had a guide point because these beer can cap holders have a tab, as you see there that I lined up with that black line in the center so that I could make sure they were aligned. Another gear button. And here's where I'm measuring out the side rails. Now if I had done the tape along the length, I could have covered the seams with these a little more readily. And I'll pop them into place relatively easily. Center it up, make sure it's straight, super glue, and I repeat that three more times where those indentions are. Just like that. Now of course I want this to sit, so I super glue a leg onto it, which I unfortunately reinforce off camera. But it ultimately looks really good with these triangular support legs. Now let's protect the foam so I can spray paint all these wonderful things gray so I can begin the actual painting process but we got to protect the styrofoam and there's two things that have styrofoam in it this and that palette with the blue tarp on it so there they are primed my water transfer decals as you saw from the last episode and various paints I took a piece of jeweler's chain when I was out spray painting coiled it up and spray painted it and it held the shape really nicely I draped it over the edge of something so that way I could drape it over the edge of that. And this is just uh, a particular size of packing twine that I picked up at Michael's, a hobby store. Make a coil of rope. And here's various sizes of it. I use the second one from the top. So I pick a color scheme for each one of these. You see all the paints laid out. Oh yeah, that's the chain. It's just some cheap jeweler's chain. I think that thing cost me five bucks. It's uh, probably a lifetime supply of that. So, remember, white takes about 10 million coats. So, you know, start with it. 
and since I want to paint this kind of a caution yellow, it's better to have a base coat of white. Here I'm painting the exposed boxes a little gray, like a light gray. I decided to go with purple on this because I play Halo, and it kind of reminded me of like a Covenant device of some kind. Here's our fuel tank, painting a kind of a light gray on the tank itself. A dark blue for the tarp on that one palette. That took two coats. Here is a kind of a golden yellow for the biohazard waste container. A regular kind of bright yellow for the sideways barrel thing. A deep gray for the concrete supports of this device. Same deep gray on all of the parts that support the uh, fuel canister. Kind of a tealy color for these little barrels. Not even sure what they are, but this is the color that they are. A little brass kind of color on the inside of that, kind of where the connection would be, I guess. Now, using those water transfer decals that I printed myself, I apply them to the various objects, giving them warning signs. Then do some dry brushing, of course. Here you can see those triangular supports I was talking about. Looks much better with those, I can tell you that. And of course, it makes it a lot more stable. Now oil wash. I make all this stuff look kind of grimy and dirty because, you know, it's been traveling the universe and sitting on planets and who knows what's happening to it. Fuel tank sitting around, rusting in whatever environment it's sitting in. Since fuels often act as oxidizers. This looks really intense when I put the brown wash on this uh, white medical supply pod. But when you dab it off, it just looks like it's been around a while. Dirty, grimy. I use black wash of the oil wash variety in all the nooks and crevices to kind of make them look like they've been holding a lot of dirt. And of course, with a little more oil paint, I actually make some interesting color choices here. Slime coming out of those two tanks and this kind of bright pink in the recesses of that Covenant device. Now I work in a biopharmaceutical company and so we get test tubes all the time and these are waste test tubes. Nothing harmful was ever in them. Uh, they were just not sterile anymore so we couldn't use them. So instead of them going into the trash I put them in my hobby room. Now these are clear glue sticks for my glue gun that I put inside, laying out a pattern for this particular set piece, lining up everything, hot gluing the lids down, painting off the caps of those and the ends of the test tube. And here I take and hot glue my uh, glue sticks that I got to a uh, ruler so that I could put some blue ink on that is very translucent. Dry brushing some silver onto the black metal parts, hot gluing the cores of these devices in, and I screw on the test tubes, and now I have energy cores or something. I make a kind of a support frame for the top as well in the same fashion. And here are some glamour shots. I'm still working on my lighting. But I think this is looking pretty cool right here. Now I knocked all of these out in an evening. About two hours I made everything that you see here. The painting took a long time and if you went with a simpler paint job it would take you less time. And of course all these steps are optional. The decals also make my life a lot easier because I would go insane trying to paint all those stripes. Here's a few more of the glamour shots. Now, if there's anything you'd like me to build or anything you'd like me to try, please leave a comment and suggestion. Uh, or suggestion in the comments. Remember to like, subscribe, share, and uh, thank you for watching. I want you all to go have an adventure in crafting. Thank you.